Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Francesco Giannoccaro. I work in Public Health England as Head of High Performance Computing and Infrastructure. Today, I will uh, take about 15 minutes of your time to talk um, about how we are using open source technology um, to deliver modern public health services. Uh, I want to talk um, very quickly about what Public Health England does. Um, is uh, an executive agency of the Department of Health in UK, which provide uh, government, local government, and the public with uh, uh, evidence-based professional uh, scientific uh, expertise and support. Is an organization that has been established uh, in 2013, um, merging uh, um, public health scientists, uh, bringing together public health scientists from about uh, um, 70 uh, organizations in one single body. So currently, PAG has 6,000 uh, employees. Most of them are uh, scientists and public health professionals. The mission of Public Health England is uh, ambitious and inspiring at the same time. Um, the PEG mission is to protect and improve the national health and well-being, reducing health inequality. And uh, we put effort in uh, um, delivering the mission through world-leading science, knowledge, and intelligence, partnership, um, delivering specialist public health services. The <clears throat> the organization came together in 2013, and um, since the beginning, uh, the effort from um, a technology point of view um, was focused on uh, supporting the scientific community uh, within the organization. So PAG um, deliver a wide range of public health services that span uh, from uh, research and scientific publication based on statistic uh, mathematical model uh, such as a spatial metamopulation model for transmiss um, transmissible disease like uh, the normal flu, uh, but also more aggressive uh, pathogen like uh, Ebola or the coronavirus that unfortunately uh, during these uh, days is um, on the news um, um, for the outbreak in China. Uh, as well as um, research and scientific publication um, through predictive models applied uh, to um, anthrax, uh, as well as inference problem, uh, able to infer uh, you know, the, the sides, the likely sides of outbreaks and uh, the location of source and special extent, ex et cetera. Another area of um, service that PEG deliver are around pathogen genomic service that we deliver to hospital um, based on the whole genome sequencing for um, essentially pathogen uh, identification, pathogen typing, uh, um, surveillance, uh, and outbreak investigation. Um, essentially, PEG receive biological samples from hospital and use those technology, the whole genome sequencing technology to analyze the biological sample and identify the pathogen um, that uh, possibly is affecting um, patients that can be, of course, um, uh, aggressive pathogen. In three years between 2014 and 2018, PEG has analyzed more than 100,000 uh, bacteria and virus genome um, in addition, we deliver service directly to the uh, public uh, through um, campaign to increase awareness around uh, cancer, um, obesity, um, smoking, and uh, other uh, well-being behavior. The technology um, ecosystem that uh, was used in uh, PEG initially was very 
uh, much focus on a restricted number of proprietary technology, primarily um, to support the business as usual um, type of IT. Uh, we, in this uh, effort of supporting the scientific community, started looking into uh, a new set of technology, and uh, we um, uh, wanted to uh, stay focused on um, open source um, more than proprietary, because we see open source um, in being very much in line with the mission of the organization, making um, as open as possible the science that we um, work with and uh, keeping open standards so that the results can be easily shared with the scientific community around the world. Uh, and I will talk um, rough, um, very lightly about uh, those technology. The requirements, as I said initially, um, uh, were around uh, improving scalability and cost efficiency for HPC, for high performance computing type of workload, which um, was used um, since the beginning in Public Health England, primarily in three um, departments. Bioinformatics, which um, has been using high performance computing to process and analyze uh, DNA for um, diagnostic and surveillance of uh, infectious disease. Um, this type of workload is very IO intensive, so the workload uh, manage a um, large amount of, of data. So the environment has to uh, be capable of um, 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 facing high throughput. Um, another area um, that is making use of high performance computing is statistic modeling and economic, uh, where uh, we run uh, uh, real time models and simulation to predict um, expected pandemic disease dynamics, supporting uh, national vaccination policy and control of uh, antimicrobial resistance. So understanding essentially how the mutation of uh, bacteria and virus are developing resistance towards uh, antibiotics. And the third area is the emergency response, which has been using high performance computing to uh, run simulation to better understand um, ahead of time, the uh, epidemiological and social uh, behavior um, and how this can potentially increase um, the risk posed by infection disease threats, including um, bioterrorism. Um, so the, the open source um, technology that we have identified to support uh, this specific niche, um, the high performance computing, has been um, OpenStack. Uh, OpenStack is a cloud technology, specifically uh, infrastructure as a service type of cloud technology. And uh, <clears throat> it's been the first uh, um, uh, new technology that we have been introduced. But uh, we also scope out a um, larger program. Um, covering uh, a number of different areas. As I say, PEG produce um, a um, very large amount of data. It's a data-driven organization. So for us, it was very important. One of the projects was uh, aiming to uh, facilitate uh, data discoverability, data browsability and shareability, essentially giving scientists the ability to add as many metadata they wanted to each file and um, data set they have been working with. And for that specific project, um, we have deployed an open source technology called iRoads uh, that make use of a cloud, on-premise cloud technology uh, based on S3. The third um, requirements and, and project was related to improving automation and uh, cross-platform orchestration. So uh, in addition to the traditional virtualization platform that we uh, were using since the beginning, VMware, uh, Overt, uh, Rev, and then OpenStack, uh, we uh, started also using a little bit uh, public cloud environment like AWS, Azure, and Google Compute. And the idea was to uh, provide a single pane of glass um, for user to 
be able to deploy um, system in each of those underpinning environment from a single set of API and a single uh, web front end. And we have chose for uh, that project an open source technology called Manage IQ. Manage IQ is the upstream name and cloud form is the version that we use, which is su um, supported by Red Hat. And the last um, area um, and project was related to deploying a platform as a service um, to support containerized application. And for that project, uh, we uh, chose to use OKD um, OpenShift. And that is um, one of the uh, topic of uh, this presentation. I think it's important to, again, emphasize the amount of data that the organization um, manage because clearly the decision in terms of technology that we chose um, have been um, dictated by the amount of storage. So when we talk about using uh, private cloud technologies versus uh, public cloud technology, hybrid cloud, multi-cloud, you are um, driving uh, in choosing one to the other um, on the basis of the requirements. So clearly if you have to move a petabyte of storage um, in a cloud, in a public cloud environment, there are constraints and the cost model are slightly uh, different than um, in case where your workload is CPU intensive. The amount of data in the space of life science is growing, uh, is constantly growing. We um, produce about 25 petabytes of data uh, worldwide every year and uh, the amount of data related to sequencing DNA is doubling every seven months and is taking over um, other uh, scientific topics like astronomy. The um, migration and introduction of uh, open source cloud technology, both on infrastructure as a service level or platform as a service level, can uh, be um, challenging, especially if uh, um, uh, you uh, don't have, since the beginning, the right uh, skill set. So uh, we have approached the introduction of this technology um, specifically uh, using the, this user case related to high performance computing. High performance computing uh, is itself a technology that uh, since the beginning is designed to allocate resources in an elastic way. So the, the software stack that you have in an HPC environment already has a job scheduler capable of uh, looking at the available resource in your cluster and allocating um, job to the nodes that are available. So the introduction of OpenStack has been um, very um, easily to deploy and to support this type of requirements because essentially the three bare metal cluster that we had uh, in Public Health England since the beginning, instead uh, of relying um, only on uh, the bare metal compute node, um, when those compute nodes were fully saturated, they were able to uh, burst additional compute capacity on this shared um, on-premise cloud environment running on OpenStack. And once the job were executed and completed, the cloud instances that was deployed to be part of the cluster were uh, released um, and made available for other workloads. But that type of um, requirements uh, solved with uh, the use of infrastructure as a service type of cloud um, wasn't the only requirement we had in Public Health England. And um, after that, we start looking into uh, how to make more um, cost eff efficient um, the uh, set of hardware and resources that were used by the legacy application. Essentially, the, the web application that we use to present to the public and to share with other organizations the, the results of the research and analysis that we do. So the, that results, of course, is shared through internet and we use a web application to, to share those results. Uh, PAG had um, about 100 web application um, considered business critical um, 
that were essentially uh, results of uh, a product commissioned and delivered in the previous year um, design had most of the majority of them has a monolithic um, application so the one of the work that we were um, looking to to do was uh, taking those legacy applications and wherever possible moving to an environment that is more efficient in terms of resource usage and this um, clearly is very much related to the version of um, uh, the application that you need to run. So th there are applications that rely on legacy uh, library, uh, legacy uh, programming language runtimes, and uh, um, keeping those legacy systems in virtual machine uh, sometimes uh, pose risk in terms of uh, having the operating system also uh, behind because if the machine was updated, that updating process was going to update library and therefore breaking the application that was using the legacy library. So uh, the, con the use of container um, has been identified to solve this issue. There are similarity between uh, the requirements uh, that we have uh, in the web application with the application that we use in HPC, meaning that um, in the HPC environment we also use a different version of pipeline, different version of workload, which rely on different version of library. In, uh, in the HPC we use um, modules traditionally to manage different version of library. But we started use, uh, looking to containers uh, as well in that, in that space. And container engine, um, specifically for HPC, are currently being developed by the open source community, one of those engine being Singularity. Um, the building of container, uh, it's uh, a process that um, can uh, be automated or can be, um, you know, um, require several steps. The automation in uh, uh, the container life cycle is one of the most relevant aspects uh, in um, managing the life cycle of the application of the, and the containers. The use of uh, the container engine itself doesn't provide the mechanism to automate the, the container life cycle. So there are a number of other technology around the container engine, I don't know, Docker, that need to be leveraged in order to automate um, the process and the life cycle of the containers. We um, have been um, seeing uh, the, the technology that we were using in other space uh, very much um, useful uh, in that process and um, OpenShift is um, integrating many of this uh, technology in one single platform very well integrated. So we were using already, for instance, GitLab, not only to do versioning of the code, but also to trigger um, operation when, um, you know, code, code is moved into um, um, stage, production, branch, and so on. So the use of um, the, the learning curve that we were facing um, was um, um, having benefit in, in using OpenShift, uh, because in addition to the container engine, you have since the beginning a number of other tools that are already integrated. Um, the, that, that set of tools um, made possible to automate the application life cycle, so the, the building process of the container, um, essentially when a new version of the code is pushed into GitLab, in our GitLab, that um, trigger through a webhook um, uh, operation on uh, OpenShift that then take care of re rebuilding the image, publishing the image in the register, and uh, then uh, having the, the running application being updated uh, uh, with the very latest version of um, 
the image that has been built. The security aspect uh, are also uh, very well um, managed by the, the platform. Uh, in situation like uh, um, Public Health England, where sensitive data are uh, managed, is impossible to think of uh, using a public registry like Docker Hub, because the risk of having uh, vulnerability in the container is uh, very high. So the having a register uh, that is const constantly um, scanned for security vulnerability is um, another functionality implemented in this platform that made possible the use of um, this technology within PAG. So, you have in one single environment uh, the, out the automation process of um, um, the application that we started with, uh, uh, you know, focusing on legacy applications wherever possible, migrating into uh, subset of container, but as of course also, you know, supporting um, completely new web applications that are um, designed to have a cloud native architecture since the beginning, so using um, this approach of microservices since the beginning. So there is the, the developer are empowered um, and facilitating in uh, their um, in maintaining the, the, the application lifecycle, but also the infrastructure team, the operators um, have um, significantly uh, simplify the work uh, through um, the level of integration and automation that is provided in this platform. Because when you think about deploying an application, you have to think about networking aspect. Uh, you know, assign uh, I don't know a set of IP address, assign DNS uh, to that application, provide uh, to that. Um, isolate an environment, uh, shared volume uh, uh, to all the uh, container or pods that need to read the same information. Um, all these operations um, are deployed and orchestrated in, in a very integrated uh, way within the platform. And uh, this gives us the ability to deploy on-premise uh, as well as off-premise. So we, at the moment, we are um, using the platform essentially for two um, projects. One is in the space of um, surveillance, meaning you know, surveillance of outbreak. Um, and uh, this type of uh, environment may need to scale very quickly um, um, across large uh, set of machines. So the ability of deploying, um, essentially having a level of portability um, that containers offer uh, clearly may uh, make the difference in this situation. So we currently run um, those type of workloads on premise, but the freedom of uh, redeploying um, OpenShift um, off-premise in a public cloud uh, give us um, that level of freedom that is difficult to have in other solution. Um, and uh, that's essentially is. I, I think um, the, the powerful uh, aspect of those technology is, um, uh, is made possible by the effort of the open source community. And uh, I think this is um, the main message that uh, you know, I would like to, to give. The ability of um, delivering this service um, is made possible by the effort of you know, many people around the world that uh, work on, on open source technology. And, and really, we take for granted this many times. But um, if you think about what our everyday life would have been, uh, if the World Wide Web was patented, or um, if the human genome was um, the intellectual property of a single company, which almost happened. Clearly, the entire uh, society as we live today was going to be different. So a big thanks to the open source community, to Red Hat to support 
uh, this technology. And thank you for listening.